And the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, has called the vast majority of police officers honest, decent and brave professionals, but has called for change. And it comes, of course, following this damning report into the Met, which found institutional misogyny, homophobia and sexism rife within the force. So it was commissioned following the abduction and murder of Sarah Everard by serving officer Wayne Cousins, and it details stories of cover-ups, sexual assault, and 12% of women in the Met say that they have themselves been harassed or attacked at work, which is a, an incredibly high number, isn't it? The Independent Report's author, Baroness Casey, says the force needs a complete overhaul. It's led to a load of different arguments to this. The usual defund the police brigade, they're out in force. I'm yet to be told what that means, really, defunding the police. What, what, what does that mean? We don't really have a police force, do we? It's just community police. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how that works. And it's tall for it to be disbanded. So there should be more regional forces, maybe some sense in that. There's also talk for it to do, frankly, more educational courses for police officers, people saying it needs to actually go, quote, unquote, woke in order to survive. So a variety of different angles for us to hit here. To break this review down further, I am joined by Hampshire Police and Crime Commissioner Donna Jones, and I'm also joined live in the studio by former Scotland Yard Superintendent. It's Nusrit Matab. Thank you very much, both of you. Uh, Donna, I will start with you. What does the police force and the Met police force need to do in in order to survive? Does it need to go woker? It definitely doesn't need to go woker. We need strong, effective leadership. And I've said this before on GB News, and I'll say it again. I hold Mark, um, Sir Mark Rowley in the highest um, esteem, as I did with Cressida Dick, actually. I think Cressida Dick was absolutely thrown under the bus previously by Sadiq Khan for, for his failings of the governance of the Met. Uh, but what we do need now is strong, effective leadership, but it has to happen quickly. And this is why I've been on GB News many times post the sentencing of uh, Wayne Cousins, post the sentencing of David Carrick, saying that I think the Met is too big. I've met with the Met PSD teams. I've spoken to people at New Scotland Yard. I've been a, a commenter on this now for well over 18 months about the failings in the Met. The focus on vetting is a misnomer. Uh, vetting is only a snapshot in time of the day that you enter policing or the day that you're vetted. But the PSD teams need to be significantly invested okay. in. I feel sorry for the people that work in those teams, and we have to do this speedily. It's been okay. a devastating day for national policing again, and if we have another report like this, I'm not sure the Met will ever be able to get over it. OK, Nasrit, I'll, I'll just continue the same question to you. Do you think that the police force needs to go woker in order to survive in a modern world? Um, I, I don't like that word anyway because I think it's quite dangerous mm. because it's negative to anything that's progressive. So, for me, what needs to happen is that they need to look at the recommendations that have been made in um, the Casey report and not do a pick and mix, but actually take it holistically, move forward. Because, quite honestly, everybody's had enough of this, including the officers within the organisation who are demoralised because they see it again as police bashing. But what they also need to understand is the data's coming from the organisation itself. Baroness Casey has been there a year. She's looked at data. She's analysed that data more forensically than the Met has themselves. Mm. OK. Uh, Donna, what would you say to people who are up in arms now saying, well, this is it, defund the police? Well, you know, if you defund the police, you basically have lawless Britain. I, mm. I, I just can't I don't understand where people are coming from. It's the most ridiculous idea. We are trying to improve the Met to make victims, women, children, men, people from ethnic minority groups safer on the streets of London. Defunding the police would put them their lives at more risk and put them at greater harm than we've ever known before. It's a preposterous idea. It's it's completely unintelligent. So I, I think it's I think it's ridiculous. There were people campaign groups who were out on the steps of New Scotland Yard earlier on today saying, unless Mark Rowley comes out and admits that he is presiding over an institutionally racist, homophobic, misogynist force, then they don't think the Met can continue. He doesn't want to wear that. He doesn't want to wear that badge of it being institutional. Uh, what do you make of that? Because people are saying they can't move on unless he does that. Um, that label has been given to uh, the Met Police previously, 1999. And now it's raised his head again. And Baroness Casey has given that review. It is institutionally racist because the data, the evidence, 
from not only the communities, but police officers themselves, the systems and processes are broken. Well, and if, actually, if what, the, what does it. that mean? Well, well just, just, just on that, I'm going to get you to expand on that now, but, but uh, you know, if you're saying it is, and the report is saying it is, OK, and the guy who's at the top of it is saying it isn't, then how can he stay in post and reform it if he can't acknowledge that? I, th I think he has to accept that label, accept the recommendations holistically and move on. So if he doesn't accept that label, then I would ask him to put a definition on what he thinks it is. What is Baroness Casey saying? Institutional racism is a McPherson definition. Processes and systems are broken and they're not serving a purpose. It's not saying that every single police officer is racist because that's wrong. That's, mm. that's, that, that we know that's wrong. So it's about saying, OK, we've got to move forward. We've yeah. got to take it forward. How can he then implement part of the recommendations and not accept what's going on? Because the communities will lose uh, mm. trust and confidence. And I think by saying that, he's already lost parts of the community that he's trying to win back and do, you know, and to move forward. Okay. It, we've got to move forward. Nothing uh, other than accept those recommendations, start to make the change, not only for the communities, but also the police right. officers that are serving those communities. John, I want to get your views on something. Keir Starmer stood up and basically said, if you are a member of another police force, you need to wake up and realise this isn't just about the Met. And also, as well, sort of Braverman was quite keen to question what Zadie Khan, the Mayor of London, had been doing throughout all of this. You are, of course... Police and Crime Commissioner for Hampshire, it's not the Met. I mean, how do you respond to, first and foremost, the accusation that probably all this stuff's happening where you are? Right, well, first of all, I do, I do agree and I acknowledge that there are bad people in every police force. This is not um, a cartel owned by the Metropolitan Police Service only. The Met is just five times bigger than the average police force in the UK. And that's why the problem is accentuated in the Met. Also, because it's so big, people have been able to hide in plain clothes. Well, not in plain clothes, they've been able to hide in their police uniforms, carrying warrant cards, acting in an, in an atrocious way, urinating on new recruits as part of initiation, uh, you know, doing all the sorts of bad things that we've heard from the Casey report. It is shocking. But I should say things do happen in other police forces. And I'm going to include in my own force in Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. We are the fifth largest force in the country outside of the Met. So we have our own complexities. The difference is, Patrick, is this. If somebody like Wayne Cousins or David Carrick labelled the rapist, the murderer, whatever it is their nicknames are, if they had been accused of the very serious offences they had in Hampshire Constabulary today in 2023, or even in fact last year in 2022, I am confident as the Police and Crime Commissioner that my Chief Constable would have ensured that they were suspended, no presumption of guilt, but suspended pending a full and thorough investigation. That is number one. And as Police and Crime Commissioner, the equivalent of Sadiq Khan, who is technically the Police and Crime Commissioner well, yeah. for London, I, I see that as part of my duty to ensure that my Chief has got one, a fully resourced Police Standards Department, and two, our anti-corruption unit is able to work on reactive but importantly, proactive investigations. Now, this is where PCCs and chief constables across the country need to be doing some soul searching today. We've all, been, we've all known the Casey report was coming for ages anyway. We need to do soul searching to make sure that we are financing and resourcing the experts in PSD departments, police standards departments, and anti-corruption anti units. So coming back to Keir Starmer, I shook my head. I could not believe his comments earlier because he was trying to deflect straight away from London in the wake of one of the most impactful police reports in the history of the Met Police onto other police forces around the country because his mate Sadiq Khan has presided over the Met Police and all of these failings for almost a all decade. Right. It's just unbelievable. All right, look, both of you, thank you very, very much. We are going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid, because we've got another bit of breaking news that we're going to have to go to in a matter of moments. Look, thank you very, very much. Always, of course, Hampshire Police and Crown Commissioner Donna Jones and former Scotland Yard Superintendent Nozrit Matab. Thank you especially for coming into the studio. I really appreciate that.